Does the Bible say anything about current events? It certainly does. It's our focus to be culturally relevant and to communicate a perspective from the scriptures. As Christians, we should have a biblical perspective of the news and be able to share that perspective with others. Welcome to today's News and Biblical Views. It's exciting to see how God uses television to speak to the hearts of people, to keep them informed, and to draw them into a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. WLYH in Harrisburg has joined with WBPH here in Allentown, and the expanded ministry is just amazing. This program is now on in Carlisle, and in York, and in Gettysburg, Lancaster County, down in Philadelphia, down into Delaware, and much of the state of New Jersey. So regardless of where you may be watching, we welcome you today, and I hope that this program will be meaningful. We would ask that you would pray for this program, and for all the programs that you watch on WLYH or WBPH. And we wanna be an encouragement to you, and today's program, I hope, will be very informative. One of the greatest problems we're facing in our nation today, and especially in Pennsylvania as well, is to be able to protect the unborn. Abortion is so prevalent, and we want to talk today about crisis pregnancy resource centers. But I want to give you a few facts before I introduce our special guest. How many abortions happen in Pennsylvania? The latest annual report from the Pennsylvania Department of Health is from 2021, which reported 33,206 total abortions. This amounts to 91 abortions every day. It also marked the fourth consecutive year in which annual abortions increased in Pennsylvania, up 10% since 2017, which is more than 3,000 abortions annually. That's the increase. What is the impact of abortion on Pennsylvania? The 2022 abortions by facility with the percentage of change from their 21 totals. Just listen and take a look. Here are just a few of the abortion facilities statistics. Philadelphia Women's Center, 5,928 abortions, down 2%. There are several of those centers in the city of Philadelphia. Planned Parenthood here in Allentown, 1,137 abortions, down 26%. That's good news. Mm -hmm. Planned Parenthood, Harrisburg, 1,470 four abortions, and in Harrisburg, abortions are up 8%. Planned Parenthood in York, 1,841, up 7%. Planned Parenthood in Reading, 1,057 abortions, up 24%. These are just a few of the statistics in regard to abortion in Pennsylvania. My special guest today, is Walt Zamrose. He's the executive director of Crossroads Pregnancy Center in Quakertown. Now, I said Zam Rose, but it's Zam Roz, is mm -hmm. that correct? That is correct, Pastor. Like Bird, Roz, yes. R O Z yeah. at the R -O -Z, end. R O Z, yes, sir. It's interesting, Walt, that your name starts with a Z mm -hmm. and ends with a Z. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever come across a name it's, before. It's pretty unique and very, and the other thing that it does is keeps you in the back of the classroom it keep, and, and yeah. the end of the line. Now with me, with <laughs> Bird, with a B, I was always up near the front. There you go. Because teachers did <laughs> use the alphabet a lot. Fortunately, I enjoyed paying attention when I was in school. Yeah. And Walt, it, it was great that we could meet not mm. long ago at a, a meeting with crisis pregnancy centers that leaders and directors that came yep. together all across the state mm -hmm. to form a coalition and uh, it's gonna be called the Pennsylvania Pregnancy Wellness mm -hmm. Collaborative, yep. and so that you can work together with these centers. Mm -hmm. But before we talk about 
your specific work. Let's just get to know you a little bit. Sure. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Walt. Well, I was born and raised on, in, on Long Island in New York, and uh, my wife was born and raised in the Perkasy area, and we both attended uh, Messiah College. I was there in the late 70s, and Cindy showed up in 1980, and we began dating. And um, after I graduated from Messiah, I moved into the Perkasy area and began working the school districts. I was a uh, uh, a health and PE teacher for 34 and a half years and a basketball coach for 37. Uh, we were just so blessed. Uh, uh, we have uh, three sons, Ryan, who's 36, married to Stacy, and has four lovely grandchildren there, and Brett, who's married to Lisa, who's 35. Three lovely grandchildren there. My youngest, JD, just turned 30, and he's married to a lovely, godly lady by the name of Hannah. Now Ryan and, 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 and Brett and my seven grandchildren, they live in Southern California. So we go often there. As a matter of fact, in about two weeks we're going okay. to visit. And your, your children are involved with uh, Dr. John MacArthur? Mm -hmm. Amen to that. Ryan is the Director of Development at the Masters University. Wow. And Brett is Dean of Students at the Masters University. Brett's wife is the women's basketball coach at the university, and JD, my youngest, just got hired by Ryan and Brett to be the director of communications, but he gets, he works mobily. He lives in okay. Telford. Okay. So he's got the best deal. So he collects a California salary, right, and wow. benefits, but he lives in Telford, PA, so that's okay. really good. Wonderful. Wow, to have all of your children involved mm -hmm. with John MacArthur's ministry yep. in one way or another. Yep. I'm sure you respect him greatly oh like I gosh. do. If my children have to be 3,000 miles away from me, my grandchildren, I can't think of a better place. Exactly. They all attend exactly. Grace Community Church. They listen to John MacArthur preach weekly. Amen. And they're just engaged and in that community. And wow. there's Christian schools in that community, Legacy Christian Academy, which is also the umbrella of right? that ministry. Uh -huh. And all my grandchildren go there except for the ones yeah. that are preschool. I went out there a number of years ago for one of his Shepherds Conferences. Mm -hmm and had the great joy of meeting uh, Dr. Nice. MacArthur and his wife at a basketball game yep. at the mm -hmm. uh, Master's yep. College, University, mm -hmm. and uh, just was so wonderful. And before I left, I went into his office, his son Matthew, actually I was staying in his son Matthew's home, okay. and Dr. MacArthur said to, to me and to one of our elders said, Whatever books you see here on the shelves, take whatever yeah. you want. I think we, we came home with so many books, yeah. it was so yeah. exciting. Yeah. So Walt, how did you become a, a Christian? Well, like I said, I was born and raised on Long Island, and um, my home was a, a loose, uh, I would say, Catholic environment. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad was actually raised in the church uh, in New York City, but he never spoke of his faith. He was, mm -hmm. he was a good man, great provider, yeah. loved us dearly, but he never really spoke of his faith. Mom came out of the city as well, Italian neighborhood, and she was Catholic. I, you know, I was baptized uh, when I was an infant, uh, communion when I was eight, confirmation when I was about 13. But it wasn't really a significant, meaningful part of my life. As a matter of fact, I was pretty intimidated by the <laughs> Catholic, the Catholic environment. Uh, and um, but I uh, fast forward, I, I I love basketball, right? And and I was a basketball player, and my basketball coach was a strong believer. And uh, I had plans of aspirations of playing basketball at the highest level in the co at the college. Didn't work out like many young men, and I was kind of floundering. And he said, and he knew that Coach Young knew that. He said, "Well, I know this little tiny school out in pa Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. You want to take a ride?" Jumped in his car. We drove four and a half hours, and I ended up at Messiah College. No intention, no purpose to that, other than I wanted to play four more years of basketball. And I wanted mm -hmm. to play college basketball, and the Lord just got a hold of my heart, and I was mentored there. While in you that, were at Messiah, mm -hmm, I was in a in, in a dorm, devotional, informal devotional, and and accepted Christ. Wow. Yeah, it was in October of uh, 1977. Wow. And just being in that environment was so rich. Yeah, Messiah College is a great school. Mm -hmm. Many many people from our church have gone there, yep. and while we're going to come back and talk sure. about how God moved you from public education okay. into being the director of a pregnancy center. Okay. And uh, we're going to take a one minute break. So don't go away. We're talking about understanding pregnancy resource centers. Don't go away. We'll be right back.
Today's news and biblical views is produced and recorded in the studios of Lighthouse TV. Positively different. Welcome back to today's news and biblical views. Today we are looking at the subject of understanding pregnancy resource centers. And I am interviewing Walt Zamraz, Executive Director of Crossroads Pregnancy Care in Quakertown. Walt, before we took the break, you were sharing how you mm -hmm. went to Messiah College and how the Lord got a hold of your heart, mm -hmm. changed you. Mm -hmm. You began to experience real repentance and faith mm -hmm. in Christ. And that's what the Bible says. Wow. We should have repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. So then you took a job and mm -hmm. you were in public education for mm -hmm. all those years. How did God move your heart to bring you into a ministry right. in a pregnancy center? Well, God has a history of doing this in my life, just like I never should have been. I mean, I never should have been at Messiah College. It was uh -huh. really other than my interest in playing basketball. Um, so I taught, like I said, for 34 and a half years. And I was coaching. And I loved teaching. I loved the kids and the people I work with. And uh, I was always passionate about that. But if I'm honest and I'm transparent, I was even more passionate about coaching basketball. So I always want, I coached at the high school level, and I always wanted to be a small college coach. And then the last third of my coaching career was ministry-based. We were coaching at places like Faith Christian Academy, it was in Sellersville at the time, Calvary Baptist in Lansdale, and we were doing things with Push the Rock and Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Mm -hmm. And I wanted my boys engaged in those environments Absolutely. because uh, that's just what we decided to do as a family. If we're gonna be passionate about this, we're gonna make sure it's of the Lord and honoring the Lord. Amen. So I, uh, at the last five years of my teaching career, I got the women's basketball position at Karen University down in Langhorne. I really thought, Pastor Burr, this was going to be my retirement project. I was just going to kind of, this was it. You know, I prepared myself. It was a lot of work doing both at the time. And I retired, and I had one year um, as a women's basketball coach where I wasn't teaching, but it wasn't a full-time job. Meanwhile, my wife, who's in uh, community banking, and has to, they have kind of an unforeseen thing that they're at, expected to serve, right? So she was serving at Crossroads Pregnancy Care on the board. And we're out walking one day, and, and, and I don't know anything. I have no idea. I don't know what a pregnancy resource center is. I don't know what an executive director is, nothing. And so I'm, we're just chatting, and I said, so what's this Crossroads Pregnancy Care? You're on the board? She's telling me a little bit about that. So what do you do as a, as, as a board member? She's telling me a little bit about that. She said, for example, right now we're looking for an executive director. So what do I say? What's an executive director? I have no idea. So she says it, could be, it needs to be somebody who can do this, 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 and this. And we're walking side by side. I realize she's now behind me. She grabs me by the shoulder. This is true. She grabs me by the shoulder and says, that's you. I said, you're crazy. I'm going to coach the women's basketball program at Karen University. Well, I'm just starting to, she said, well, let's just pray about this. So I start praying about it. And she goes off to work. And coaching is like a second shift job. So I'm at home by myself. And I'm starting to take these devotions of growing long walks with the Lord. And all of a sudden, he's just growing this idea on my heart. So by the end of the summer, I put in an application. I get an interview. I hear nothing. Right? I get another interview in January. I hear absolutely nothing. I get another interview in the following March again. So then about a couple weeks later, they offer me the position. So I kind of figured I was like the last man standing. <laughs> Nobody else wanted the job. And, 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 and here we are. Wow. Yeah. Well, it is so amazing how God works to mm -hmm. his invisible hand at work, mm -hmm. how he directs our paths. Yep. So tell us a little bit, what is a pregnancy resource center? Pregnancy Resource Center, more times than not, is going to be a 501c, a nonprofit, and they more times than not are birthed out of a church okay. or, 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 or a women's ministry. And what we do is we service women and families uh, who find themselves in, a, in what would be considered a pregnancy that's causing a crisis, mm -hmm. right? And they're unsure about how they want to handle the pregnancy. Many of them are scared, they're confused, they're worried, uh, and some know that they want the pregnancy and the child, but they just need help. Mm -hmm. 
So we offer services, they, pregnancy resource centers offer services to minister to those women and those, and those families. And, and while it often happens that a young girl or whatever it is, it doesn't matter the age, mm -hmm. but they often get under a lot of pressure mm -hmm. from the one that they're pregnant from, whether yep. they're married or yep. they're single, mm -hmm. and from family, and they say, you, you can't do this, you, you've got your education in front of you, yep. you've got too many pressures, you can't do yep. this. And deep in their heart, often they're saying, I, I would love to have this yep. child because adoption is a great option. Mm -hmm. Or there are other families that, you know, like in foster care, whatever, will care mm -hmm. for that child. Yep. Mm -hmm. How many of these uh, pregnancy centers are there across the state of Pennsylvania? Currently, roughly about 160. 160. So there's way more than one might, might, yep. might imagine. Yep. Right? And so exciting to see how this collaborative yep can help. Now, Absolutely. I've been on the board of Bright Hope here yep. in Allentown Great with, the, yep. with John Merwarth. Yep. And uh, we've encouraged John to get involved in things mm -hmm. like this because you learn so much when you interact with yes. other directors of the centers. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about the vision okay. of Crossroads. At, at Crossroads, our, uh, an abbreviation of our vision is we want to bring hope, help, and healing to women who are dealing with an unplanned pregnancy. I like that. Hope, help, help and heal. And then I kind of break that down when I present. I say the hope that we offer our clients is our desire to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We think ultimately that is the thing that's going to bring the most hope into the situation. And that is a very, at the very core of what we want to do. Some people talk about pro-life. Mm -hmm. Your viewers will understand this. We talk about pro-abundant life. Pro-abundant. In, in Christ. Amen. The help we offer is directly related to our free services. Mm -hmm. We offer free medical services, free pregnancy testing, STD testing, and free treatment, as well as free ultrasounds. And then once babies are born, when we're ministering to families, we offer free material support for moms and babies. Everything from formula to baby food to diapers to wipes to lotions to creams to car seats to strollers to pack and plays, anything that we think can help facilitate this, this positive family environment. And this environment. is all free? Absolutely, positively. It's all free wow. through the generosity of those who will, who will donate those items to us mm -hmm. and the funds that are necessary for the medical staff to do, to do the services. And then yep. the, um, the third thing is, is the healing. We, have, um, we want to see women who, have, who are what we refer to as abortion wounded. They have a history of abortion. This could be five months, this could be 10 years, 15, 20 years down the road, and they are still harboring mm -hmm. the secret. They're suffering in silence because they can't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. We offer biblically-based programming to help them understand that in the mercy and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. And you don't have to carry this burden. Amen. And we can heal these wounds. So we have a team that deals specifically with that, that demographic wow. of women. Wow. And I'm excited about that because that's, uh, God is growing that right yeah. now Absolutely. at our center. And I just want to say to our audience that, that it's the healing that God can bring. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've been through an abortion and you've got yeah. the night trauma. You've got the, the bad dreams. You've got all of the guilt mm -hmm. and fear. We want you to know that no sin Amen. is beyond the blood of Jesus Christ. You can be forgiven, and God can look at you as, as if you had never sinned at all. That's what it means to be justified, and that's all through faith in Jesus Christ. So we want you to know that there is help and hope and healing available to you, no matter what you've been through. And uh, we're not looking down on you if you've had an abortion. We want you to know that God loves you and Jesus died on the cross for you. And you can have a whole new life and you can find help and wholeness and healing through these centers. So please take advantage of this. We have one more moment of break, but we have some more to share with you. So don't go away. Watch Lighthouse TV wherever you go. Available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and Apple TV. You can view our in-house studio productions on demand or watch what's on the station right now with our 24-7 live stream. Search Lighthouse TV online on your streaming device or go to our website, lighthousetv.org for more information. Lighthouse TV, positively different. Welcome back to today's news and biblical views. We're having an interesting discussion on the subject of understanding 
pregnancy resource centers. There are just many, many of these centers uh, across the state of Pennsylvania, and maybe there's one near you. And we want you to know that there's help and hope and healing available to you. My special guest today is Walt Zamraz, and he is the executive director of Crossroads Pregnancy Care right here in Quakertown. And there are these centers all over. Mm -hmm. So if you're not close to Quakertown, don't fear, you'll find one. Mm -hmm. And you can go on the website to find one. So while we're talking about how God has blessed and provided all these mm -hmm. products and everything, so, yeah. and it's all free, no charge, whatever. Absolutely. That, that's just amazing. So yeah. how does God fund this ministry? And what, what are some of the resources that you have to help people? So financially, we're funded by about Crossroads is, and I would think it would be similar to other pregnancy resource centers, about 40 churches in the, in the upper uh, Bucksmont area. And then we have individual businesses, Christian-owned businesses, families, and individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we do fundraising. We have like four fundraisers throughout the, throughout the year. That would be the financial portion. But the, uh, the material portion, it's really quite amazing. These great gifts just kind of show up at our door. People know who we are, where we are, the work that we're doing. And, um, and also churches. Churches will donate material support, all those things that I mentioned before. And we're, and we're very connected to other ministries that can provide those things as well. There's a great ministry down in the Warminster area called His Hands in Service. And he provides us with some of the more mechanical, larger items, because they have to be brand new. Mm -hmm. They have to come in the box mm -hmm. before we can give those to, to our clients. But we are just blessed. Uh, uh, missionary Hudson Taylor amen. once said, God's work done God's way Amen. will never lack God's supply. Yep. So I preached that all mm -hmm. my years of pastoral ministry yeah. and I would tell people, we just keep asking the question, are we doing God's work? Mm -hmm. Are we really convinced according to his word, yeah. this is God's work, are we doing it God's right. way? Yeah. Are we doing it just the way of the world? The yeah, world has yeah. all kinds of methods to offer Dangerous. us. <laughs> God's work done God's way will never lack God's supply. Mm -hmm. I wholeheartedly believe that. One of my, uh, if I may use uh, examples, is uh, heroes is George Mueller, right? What yep. that man accomplished. And, and past the word, he never asked anybody. I wish I could convince my board of that, that I don't yeah. have to ask it right. in the blessing. But I, I'm sure God would take care of us. Yes, yeah. and he does. He provides oh, these man. services. And that's the beauty of my, I get to see that part, right? I'm the guy that's out communicating with the churches and when things show up and I open the mail, so I see the gifts. Mm -hmm. It is a blessing. Yeah. yeah. And I, as I say, I've served on the board here of Bright Hope mm. for the last several years and I, I am thrilled. Mm. Rarely do I go to a, you know, to a, a meeting. Yeah. I mean, I went to elder board meetings, deacon meetings yeah. for 50 years almost. But I love going to those board meetings yeah. at Bright Hope because I hear the reports of mm -hmm. changed lives and how yep. people are coming to the Lord and how God is bringing in resources. And, mm -hmm. and the story of, you'll have to get to know John Murwath a yep. little I more. Know of John, and we've met occasionally. Yes, yep. good, because yep. John was out there doing, I think he had a pesticide business yeah, or something business, like I that. Thought, yeah. And God tapped him on the shoulder like your wife <laughs> was used of God to tap you. Yep. and how God brought him into the ministry. It's yep. so exciting. And yeah, they're doing a great work, as you well know. Being yes, on board. And, and well, today, of course, the climate mm. across our country, I mean, it's, you know, abortion is so prevalent, yeah. and we're grateful for many of the good things that have happened with mm -hmm. Roe versus Wade being reversed, mm -hmm. and other things. Of course, it's back in the States now to make decisions, but, well, in this climate, in this climate, what would you say about protecting life and what can we do? People mm. are out there wondering, what can I do? How can I get involved? Well, the first thing, and this sounds like the, the Sunday school or the church answer, but this is just absolutely our heart at Crossroads. Just please pray for us. Amen. Pray for the work, pray for our safety. Pray, and here's the big one that I've been sharing a lot. Pray that more would find us. I feel like that God has equipped us. We have a great medical team. We have a great client care team that deals with our pregnancy and family care. And we have a great post-abortive team. We want to see more. So that's, that's, that's the biggest thing. And then, and then of course, the, for the provisions that, that we need. But we want the opportunity to speak truth into this situation, these lies that are being broadcasted, right? And, 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 and we're totally dependent on the sovereignty of God to help us to do that. Because we are 
out finance big time, yep. right? Yep. And, and, and the mega machine that the pro-abortion the pro -abortion industry offers and the money that they're putting into the political system and advertisement yep. and all these things. We can't compete with no, that, from a, and that's what you were saying before. We don't want to from a worldly perspective. Yep, yep, yep. We, want to, we, want to, we want to rely on the sovereignty of God Amen. And, and the hand of God. And well, uh, just one more little comment. Mm -hmm. How can people get in touch with you? You sure. have a website? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Give us well, the our, website. Our, our supporter website, our friends website is friendsofcrossroadsqtn.care. Okay. Friends of Crossroads QTN for Quakertown. Okay. Dot, dot care. We have a client okay. website, but that's strictly designed for clients. Right. And then okay. we have our friends website. Okay. So if people are watching and they would yes. like to support or get involved, yep. or volunteer, or find out crucial. about other pregnancy centers, maybe in their area, maybe they're watching mm -hmm. in Gettysburg or in Carlisle mm -hmm. or out that way, they can we contact have, we you. We have a couple of needs. May I may, may I yes, say that? Yes, quickly. We are we are we are in the need of a, um, a volunteer uh, RDMS licensed ultrasound technician. Okay. And in 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 June, I'm broadcasting out a little bit. We'll be in the need of a, a professional uh, administrative assistant. So, and those are you know one's a volunteer position, one's a paid position. Okay, so they can contact the Lord. you. And Absolutely, learn please. more about that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. I'm sure. so glad the Lord crossed our paths in mm -hmm. Lancaster some time ago yep. and that we could have this time together. God mm -hmm. bless you. Thank you. In every way. And I, I get excited to see how God is at work. And again, uh, God loves those little babies. Yeah. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, the Lord said to Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you and called you a prophet unto the nations. And he sent Jeremiah to do a great work. I know that God loves you. That's what the Bible's all about. Turn to Jesus. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. You don't have to have an abortion. You can give up that child for an adoption. You can raise it yourself. God will provide. Look at all the resources he'll provide. God is on your side. He's not against you, he's for you. Repent of your sins. Be sorry. Turn to Jesus. Invite him into your life. He'll change you. You'll never be the same. Thank you for watching today's program. God bless you.